In this video, we're going to be reviewing Skies of Fury DX for the Nintendo Switch. This video is brought to you by OPSeat.com, comfortable, affordable gaming chairs. Save $10 at checkout by using coupon code N64JOSH. Skies of Fury on the Nintendo Switch has some of the best dogfighting I've played in a while, but lacks any real depth to want to play it for a long period of time. Let's break this thing down. First, let's look at the graphics. Cell shaded graphics at their finest. The planes look amazing, like they were taken right out of a World War I comic book. They are worn and they look like they've been through some battles. The stages look pretty good, almost like pastel watercolor paintings with beautiful puffy clouds. Unfortunately, each stage is nothing more than a palette swap, so it really lacks variety. The ground looks the same other than the colors changing. Watching the pilot's scarf flapping in the wind or the bullets ripping through the sky are great details that really help this game shine graphically. The game looks good both docked and undocked with no frame rate issues. Let's talk sound. I gave it a 9 out of 10. From the rumble of the engines to the firing of machine guns, this game nails it in the sound department. The music fits perfectly with dogfights and helps give you that feeling that you are in an epic battle to the death. Story. I gave it a 6 out of 10. The story is told through comic strips at the end of each level. There's not much here to make you care about the characters or what's going on. This is an arcade shooter with minimal story elements sprinkled in. That doesn't make it bad, just don't expect much from it in the story department. For content, I gave it a 5.5 out of 10. Looking at this game initially, it looks like a buffet of content, but when you dig into it, you realize it's missing the main course. Like nothing but mashed potatoes with a color palette swap. We have three game modes. Campaign. Little to no story. Three reoccurring missions. Dogfight, Escort, and Fly Through the Rings. You can level up your pilot, unlock plane skins, and loot boxes that unlock more skins and different crosshairs. Having all those unlocks seems like you could play forever, but the monotony of the same three missions during the campaigns will wear you out quick. Leveling up your pilot would feel more rewarding if it actually seemed like you were leveling up. After leveling up in the campaign and then jumping into survival, nothing seemed all that different. All the skins are really cool. Some have animations like fire coming off of them or hearts, but the problem is, some skins unlocked from loot boxes are still locked until reaching level 70 or 80 in the campaign. You can add modifiers to the campaign to make the missions more difficult, but it doesn't change the fact that you're repeating the same three missions over and over again. Another mode we have is survival. This can be solo or split screen. Probably the best mode in the game because you can compete against yourself trying to get the best score and the highest wave. You level up as you progress, so it's a nice touch, but again, I really didn't notice any difference in my plane. The last mode we have is Versus. In tabletop mode, you can share the joy and go head to head with uh, one Joy-Con each. In docked mode, you can do up to four players. Computer players fill the battle with with more players so it's fun but it got old pretty quick there's no online multiplayer for this game and it's really a shame because it would have really added to the replayability as far as controls go I gave it a 9.0 9 out of 10 controls are tight and responsive uh, maneuvering in for the kill or getting a bogey off your tail was no problem with joy cons or the pro controller Using split Joy-Cons, a little more tricky. You use the L and R buttons as modifiers for the four face buttons. So pressing the up button will throttle up, but if you're pressing the, the trigger, L or R, the up button will activate your ultimate. So it works, but I wouldn't necessarily recommend it for long play sessions. Gameplay. I gave it a 5.5 out of 10. Gameplay is where this game is so divided. 
I feel like it's all dressed up but has nowhere to go. This game absolutely nails being a top-notch arcade shooter. The dogfights are intense and just fun. There's a little too much auto-aiming for my liking, but it makes the game more accessible for players of all levels. And that is a minor complaint in an otherwise stellar dogfighting game. What's really lacking is variety. You basically play on one level with different colors. Give me some canyons or buildings to help mix up the gameplay. Though there are multiple skins, why not create multiple classes of planes? Something like light, medium, and heavy that would allow you to choose a playstyle you like and add variety to the game. Three missions repeated again and again isn't a campaign. And why during a war game am I flying through rings as a mission? It's like doing a continuous tutorial. Let's take out some ground transports or attack some bases. Let me escort ground troops or, troops or just control the gunner in the back seat. Something to break up the monotony. If the campaign isn't the main focus of the game, and multiplayer is, then why isn't there an online mode? I feel like this title suffers from an identity crisis and it bums me out because I see so much potential to fill the void in gaming that has been missing since Crimson Skies on the OG Xbox. So my final score for this one is a 7.2. The bite-sized style of game may work for mobile where this game came from, but doesn't work that well on the Switch. The gameplay is addicting and really fun, but the lack of online multiplayer and variety in levels and planes really keep this game from being great. There's an amazing foundation for an arcade style dogfighting game that just needs more to do. This game has so much potential and I hope we see some updates to really complete it. Thank you so much for watching my review of Skies of Fury DX on the Nintendo Switch. If you enjoy this video, hit it with a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet, hit that subscribe button. And if you have any other questions about Skies of Fury, let me know in the comments below. We'll see you in the next video.